Hello and welcome. This video is brought to you by the StreamingAdvisor.com. Tailor your entertainment with streaming. And what we want to look at in this video is the best free Roku channels. Roku's got a lot of channels out there. And the first I'm going to start with is you can't go wrong with the Roku channel on Roku. The Roku channel has a ton of free content. And one of the big deals is its free guide. But in general, you can look and find that there are tons and tons of different offerings from their recommendations to even genre-based rows. Something like you would find in, you know, a normal Netflix or, you know, an app like that. You see Adventure. Here's a section just for, like, kids with just, you know, recognizable things that they might enjoy. The live TV section here has a lot of live feeds from free internet-based programming. And you see it goes on from there. You can also buy into subscriptions to different services through Roku. If you already have your Roku set up with your credit card, what it does is like automatically charge you for whatever. Like if you sign up for Cinemax, it'll charge your card. That's all going to be changing when, you know, now that HBO Now is going to be a thing on there. Or actually, not HBO Now, but HBO Max. Silly me. But in general, that's the deal. I, you know, you can even find good offers, like, you know, deals, things like that. There is also a live TV grid on this service that will allow you to kind of go down through channels much the same way you would have in a digital cable guide, but I don't typically put those online because all of a sudden one little commercial turns into some big thing with Google, and I don't want to go in that route. Another channel that you just can't do without on a Roku, as far as I'm concerned with, is YouTube. YouTube has been around pretty much as long as streaming has been around. It's the, as you would well know, it's the worldwide leader in streaming. But the YouTube app has grown quite a bit. Like, obviously, you can go ahead and search for something. For instance, you see all the things we've searched for over there. <laughs> Baby Yoda, the cranberries, and so on. But, you know, YouTube, of course, has always been a place where you can find... Whatever it is that people are putting out there, for instance, there's us. You're, you might be here obviously watching the Streaming Advisor channel right now. But, and we subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, there's a early reminder to do so. But YouTube's channel in general has a lot to offer that it didn't necessarily in the first place. It became a major hub for music, and the newer YouTube app really exemplifies that by breaking down all of its music selections into different sections. This is really no different than something like Pandora or, you know, any sort of radio music playing app. Its whole music section is almost an app unto itself, which is probably why they have, you know, a YouTube music. But in this case, it's all built into the basic YouTube app. You see that you've got lots of different sections, you've got playlists... Of course, it will recommend things based on what you're listening to. So, you know, okay, so it gives it away. I listen to a little bit of Weird Al, so sue me, you know? But, uh, you know, you see, you can go through and find anything and everything on YouTube. I actually really like the relaxing music. It's, it's good to work with. Its gaming section is obviously more niche. If you are a person who loves to watch people play video games on TV, like with Twitch or something like that, then this is just another outlet for that. But like I said, that's pretty particular. So we're just going to kind of move on from that. But don't miss it if you're a gamer, especially a computer gamer. The news section is cool. It's a compilation of things. They pull from tons and tons of different sources. There's a lot of people I know who you know, wake up in the morning, they hop on news on YouTube, and that's where they get their news. If you don't want to sit around watching 24-hour news channels and things like that, it's just an easy way to know what's going on. You, know, you get the cool sports highlights. You get the important events. YouTube also has free movies. 
and this is really nice. It's you know they're free with ads. It's not as large a searchable section as you find with other things. It also rents movies because it's Google. You know they want to sell you stuff. So you know they have previews. They have things that you can rent straight up. You know just like if you were using Google Play or any other movie service for that matter. But there's a lot to offer on YouTube. And of course, the vast majority of it is still free. You just can't you can't leave YouTube out. And of course, if you sign in on your account, this allows you to access everything you watch. Everybody that you subscribe to, like, you know, the streaming advisor and everything else. You can see that it organizes it A to Z, so whatever you like, you find it on YouTube, you subscribe. It's just a good overall setup. Pluto TV is something else we're going to take a look at. Now, boy, this is an app that if you've never checked it out, you'll thank me for this. Because Pluto TV has a huge library of both on-demand content and live streaming channels. You see that it breaks down into numerous categories. And what they do is they curate everything. It's cur- curation is, you know, they say, here's what we want on the comedy channel. We're going to put this, we're going to put that. You know, they'll start a specific channel just about a TV show. Maybe they'll feature a specific stand-up comedian on a channel. You see you got riff tracks. But in general, Pluto TV is a, just a can't miss between its many, many, many on-demand titles and its over 100, gosh, I don't even, I've lost count of just how many hundreds of channels there are on Pluto TV because they add things, they'll add new things, you know, just based on, like I said, like a TV show on a person. So it's a free app. You most definitely want to check it out and go from there. Now that takes us to Peacock. This was one of the controversial ones earlier this year or late in 2020 because it took a while to come onto the Roku in the first place. Looks like it's taken a minute to open itself. But Peacock is a really interesting app. It's kind of a hybrid. There's a whole, whole lot of free stuff. In fact, they advertise it as though it's a completely free app. The truth is, though, that there is, while there is a lot of free stuff, there are some things that are not free. Luckily, they don't make it impossible to tell exactly what's free and what isn't as long as you get into things. For instance, I'll show you an example. 30 Rock is an NBC show, you know, on an NBC app here. And all of their stuff is free on Peacock. So you can watch their entire show, the entire run of the show. And that's great, right? If you like 30 Rock. But you know, something else that they've been advertising a lot, you've probably noticed on TV, is The Office. So it's sitting right there. Looks like it's you know, the same as 30 Rock. Go up, jump into The Office. And launching. And so when you jump into The Office, you'll see something different. See how there's that little feather there? It's a peacock feather. That means that you've got to pay to get in. That's like their little premium symbol. So you can watch seasons one and two, but you'd have to pay for the rest. Of course, a lot of Office fans tell me they stop watching as soon as, you know, Michael leaves. Spoiler alert, hey, it's almost a 20-year-old show anyway, right? But that's the deal with that. And you'll find that all over Peacock. And unfortunately, there is not... A section like you find with Amazon that would just say all free content or free to me or anything like that. So as you go through the different categories, movies and TV shows, you'll see some things that are free and some things that aren't. The movies are easier to pick out because they're obviously not broken up into seasons or individual episodes. While TV shows can be a little trickier. You can watch anything that is currently showing on NBC. So you see all of these NBC series. And this is kind of a little bit like I can add supported version of Hulu or something like that, which is cool. You know, it's strictly NBC. But you can get the last five episodes of most series. 
So if you hadn't been watching This Is Us, you're you're one behind. But in general, this is a interesting service, and I think it has a lot of chances to grow. It even has another live TV sort of thing called channels that we'll jump into in a second. But there's a ton to watch. It's you know if you really want to pay for it, it's like about five bucks. That'll give you a, you know access to everything. But of course, you know this video is primarily about the free stuff. In its sports section, there's some stuff that's premium. This is like live things. There's a lot of soccer and a couple of other sports that you can watch live. You can also check out the Dan Patrick Show. That's sort of like a simulcast. But the last most important thing to show you in Peacock here is the channels. And what they've done with their channels is they organize everything based on mostly things they own. There's a whole lot of NBC branded things. You know, TV shows, news updates from their various things. But that is Pluto. I'm sorry, that is Peacock. What we're looking at here is Crackle. Crackle is one of the oldest streaming services out there. It's, it's one of the oldest free streaming services. It's changed hands a bunch of times. It's now owned, it started with Sony, but it's now owned by the company that makes chicken soup for your soul. You know, those inspirational books and things like that. But this company owns Crackle now, and it's a very attractive app. You can actually sign in and create your own personal profiles, but without it even. There's a ton of stuff. You see that it breaks everything down into a pretty easy to search through and scroll through A to Z categories. There are tons of categories. Everything from you know, action, comedy. I mean, you don't have to read this out to you. You're not, you know, you can read, so I won't do that. That's silly. But in general, this is a solid app that has a ton of movies. It has a lot of TV shows too, but in general, you'll notice that they're of the older variety. Popcorn Flits is also owned by Chicken Soup for the Soul. It's a different feel of an app. I think that the interface is a little old looking, to be honest with you. I think they're probably, you know, we, should, we should be looking for an update soon because this, this feels, you know, early streaming box. But there's a lot out there. There's some cool documentaries. Saw one about wrestling. I'm an old wrestling fan. But there's a lot on here that you'd be surprised to find. You know, you might not have ever even heard of popcorn flicks. And you flip through and you might see your favorite actor showing up in a movie. Just like others, of course, there are numerous genres. A lot of the stuff on here, you might call it almost B-movies. But in general... It's entertainment, and it is not expensive. Zumo is another one, a lot like Pluto TV. Zumo has a mixture of live TV options as well as on-demand. We're looking at the on-demand movie section here. But if you look through, it has movies, it has an on-demand section, and like Pluto TV, it has whole themed sections of things like news or sports or comedy and there's a whole lot to see there there's this is this is another one that's been around for a long time it's currently associated with comcast so you can enjoy a lot of things and you know don't don't be too surprised if you see more nbc or comcast branded things showing up out there at some point because they're all one big happy family these days but you see that, you know, you can go through, see the hearts if you like. You can pick your favorites and get straight to what you want to see. But Zumo TV is a really cool f free app that's been growing and getting better and better for the better part of about five years now. It's seen explosive growth in the last year or so. Explosive growth. So don't miss out. CW is a really cool app if you like CW. This is yeah, this is a little more like the games. It's specific. But the CW, you know, you may be aware, is a network that 
it's targeted a lot towards teenagers and guys. It has a lot of these DC Comics things. Things, you know, people call it the Arrowverse because they had their Green Arrow show that grew out and it kind of exploded with all of these other spinoffs. But the thing about this is if you're moving along during the season, just like with Peacock, you have to keep up. You're going to have your last five episodes of any given show, and you can watch along without having to worry about grabbing it off an antenna or paying for a streaming service that has CW. You've just got it. Right now, it's currently showing Batwoman. That's the the newest comic book show. I haven't checked it out yet. Not this season. But in general, the CW has always been pretty strong. News on is the answer to, well, how do I watch local news from my area? You'll see that it has live sections, and it'll break everything down. You'll see up at the top by location. But what you can do with news on is get a real feel for what's happening in a local area, even an area that isn't yours. It's kind of helpful. You know, there there might be a you know there might have been a tornado in Kansas. You find a Kansas station, you're going to find really good updates as to what's going on that you wouldn't necessarily get from something like CNN. The channels are kind of locked in with Sinclair. So if there's not a Sinclair channel in, like, say, your general area, you might miss out a little bit. Like, I'm looking through North Carolina right here, and I live in the Raleigh area. There's not a Raleigh channel here. So... You're limited in that. If you're looking for your news channel, you can always go into Roku search and type in the call letters. But this is a good place to start. Plex. Plex is another oldie but goodie when it comes to Roku. Roku was one of its first platforms, in fact. What they've done with Plex over the last couple of years is organize it in a way where it still allows you to get to your media and share servers. But what they've done is put a lot of other features in. They have an access to podcasts. They have a whole section of free TV and movies. And this is, you know, this has been growing and growing over the last couple of years. You see that they let you know when you're going to miss out on something. They have watch lists if you're signed up. If you're, you know, not signed up but signed in. Plex is free, just so you know, if you want to sign in. It has a good little smattering of categories. Not too much to get lost in, but enough to to break things up so it's not just, you know, one big block of information. And its channels here are based on the different studios represented by their selections. So you see, Crackle is actually kind of integrated in with Plex. But these other sorts of things are also available, including this this newer one, BBC. This has not always been the case, but there's BBC content with Plex now. So if you're looking for kind of a multifaceted app, you know, Plex builds in a lot, including the live uh, live TV app that just looks like it's struggling to load today. But the live TV app is another one like Pluto TV or Zumo. Curated content. It's really cool. It has a web show section that's basically like it's a... They're almost like video podcasts. You see that they can, you know, range from, you know, long and to, you know, to very short form things. Like some other apps, Plex also has some paid features. You can actually sign up to use music through Plex. It actually has a partnership with Tidal. You don't have to do that, but it's a cool little interface that if you are a Tidal music subscriber or you're looking for a music service and you want to keep everything all in one place, it's nice. If you already have music on a server that you're integrating with it, you know, it'll, it'll put all of your music in one place. And I think that's helpful. I think you should enjoy that a lot. So if you've never done anything with Plex, check it out. There's a lot to see. And next we're going to finish out. You can't have a whole thing about free things without having a shout out to the Shout Factory.
And finally, you can't have a video about free apps without having a shout out to the Shout Factory. If you've never seen Shout Factory, you've been missing out on some pretty unique content. Shout Factory is a place where you can get all kinds of cult TV, cult movies, and some of this classic stuff like you see Johnny Carson and Carol Burnett. It has a whole big selection of things like from Japan. You know, you'll, you'll see there's you know, things like Ultraman and these kaiju movies and characters like that. It's got a, you know, a whole group of different categories, just like you would expect to find in any decent app. It's also the home of the original Mystery Science Theater 3000 library and Rift Tracks. Here in the TV, you sort of see what I'm talking about. So you got your Carol Burnett show, the Kim Tim Conway show, and then all of a sudden, you know, classic Johnny Carson, Hulk Hogan. So, you know, this is a whole lot to check out. I mean, if, if you're into that certain stuff, it's not for everybody, but between the cult movies and, you know, free TV streams that they offer, there's a lot to see if you're into that kind of thing, you know, just like the games on YouTube. Some people will say, I'll never watch that. And some people are going to be like, wow, thanks. I'm really glad you pointed that out. If you would like to leave a comment, please do. But that's it. That is the free content, at least some of my favorite free content on Roku. There's other stuff out there. There's even a Roku zone where you can just find free stuff. But that are the, those are the channels that I wanted to highlight in this video. If you have any other channels you'd like to see information on, please let us know in the comments. As always, please subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Ryan Downey, the Streaming Advisor. Stream on, my friends.